hi everyone welcome back so in this video i will discuss about kernel debugging methods so let's get started so this is the content that i will be discussing in this video so we will discuss about the importance of print k then we will briefly discuss about oops and panic and then we will discuss about bug and bug on methods and we will discuss about sysrq key and we will briefly discuss about uh, gdb and kgdb so all these things we are going to discuss in very brief manner if you want to understand them in deep manner i will provide the links to the same and you can explore more so this is not going to be a very extended or descriptive video because these things kernel debugging is not very easy task so if i make a video for every topic then we have to cover a lot of things so in this video i am going to discuss very briefly so let's now discuss how we do kernel debugging so kernel debugging is very tedious and very difficult task so most of the time the problem comes that if in the, if something is some bad thing is happening in the kernel if we can reproduce that problem then we say that half of the problem we have solved but the problem is that the reprodu reproducibility of that problem sometimes is very less so we have to debug the kernel and like if we know that which version of the kernel was working and which is not working in that case it help us to understand uh, where we have to search uh, for the problem and as you go through the kernel uh, in deep manner at that time you know where to look when you have some kind of problem like if you know there is some problem in the memory or uh, related code then you know which section of the kernel is handling related to memory code so respectively we go there and we will try to uh, look into the problem based on the logs of the kernel so here are some of the examples where we can see what kind of so uh, problems can be there so this is example like if we are writing very layman incorrect code obviously that is a problem so a second type of problem can be like synchronization problem we are not uh, handling shared code or critical section properly without uh, logs so it can corrupt the code and it uh, system may not work properly and similarly if we are having some like some registers or some other cpu or some other hardware and if if uh, we are not writing the correct data on that hardware then it will not handle the input accordingly and it can lead to the uh, corruption of the kernel and there is other issues timing related and there are multiple kind of problems these are just some examples so let's now understand print k so print k is kind of a printf in the user space but in uh, kernel space we use print k to print any message in the kernel so it is very robust function and we can call it anytime anywhere it means that uh, we can call it in the uh, kernel space we can call it in the uh, interrupt uh, interrupt context and um, uh, and it is uh, like everywhere it will work most of the time it is the only case is uh, like print k uh, print the output in the console so the main problem is that until console is up at that time during the boot we may not access this print, print k once uh, kernel is booted at that time print k will always work so if you want to use the print k in early stage of the boot process then uh, architecture specific print k we have so for x86 we have early print k so it can print some messages during the boot process also uh, for the print k uh, we have different log labels so there is one console log label and this is the defined log label so in the print k statement we can define uh, uh, which level of the log it, it, uh, it is and accordingly uh, below that uh, uh, so i mean i mean to say that based on this uh, uh, log levels we can print a different kind of uh, print k statement so if it is a debug uh, uh, related log level then at that time all the 
print case statement that are related to kernel debug log level those will be printed so let's now understand how print cage implemented so it is being implemented uh, with the help of circular buffer implementation and this is a configuration that we have to set uh, while building the kernel kernel and it will define how how much space will be allocated to store the print k output in a particular file in the circular manner so circular buffer have multiple benefits so like if we have uh, too much logs so it is kind of uh, let me show you so it is kind of a circle so say this is an initial position so logs will be printed here 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 and continuously it, it will be go there and if we are printing too much log uh, too much logs at that time the initial logs will be overwritten so we will move move like this so the only disadvantage is that we are, when we are printing printing too much logs at that time the initial logs will be uh, missed and we will be over overwritten those messages else it is working fine but it has also the benefit that when when we are printing uh, too much messages at that time we don't need infinite memory within the same memory we are rotating so it is kind of limiting the corruption of kernel so let's now understand oop so oop is a way uh, by which kernel communicates to the user space that something bad has happened so like we are accessing a, a memory that is not allowed to access or uh, like uh, or some illegal instruction that are the uh, those instructions are not allowed to run in the kernel if we are executing those statements at that time kernel will communicate to the user with the help of oops so oops can happen at any time so there are some conditions where our system will not continue to execute and it has to stop and restart the system so those are like uh, if we have a oop or some wrong condition in the interrupt context at that time we want uh, allow kernel to boot and we want to restart the system so at that time uh, we kernel try to panic so we will understand panic further so you for now you can uh, you can say that panic is a situation where kernel cannot return back to the normal situation or it cannot recover or like if it is trying to recover then we can have the loss of data and we can we cannot have the uh, right uh, right uh, outputs at that time kernel will panic and it will uh, automatically restart the kernel and there is other condition like uh, this is a init process so if we are having some oops in uh, idle task or pid 0 or pid 1 process at that time without pid1 or pid0 we can't uh, run the whole uh, boot the whole kernel so at that time also kernel will panic and it will stop the execution and restart the kernel build process so this is a function with the help of uh, this function panic it will hand, uh, handle the panic uh, it will execute the panic condition in the system so this is a utility so like when oops happens uh, we try to print some message to the user on the console and these are the important uh, things that we want to look into so these are the cpu registers so we try to take the content of the cpu registers and we also try to take the function uh, stack like sequence of the calls of the functions that uh, that were executing when oops happened so these these data we are taking when oops happened so we want to see what was the what was the condition of the system when that oops happened so that's why we will try to take the content of the cpu registers and we will try to uh, take the function calls that were happening at that time in this way we can map the actual problem uh, while going back based on the register uh, values and function calls and the messages message given by the kernel so these uh, these data is uh, machine specific code so we have a utility uh, k all sims so what it does it it converts this uh, machine specific data to a 
human uh, readable data and it will map these content uh, like function call function name to the memory location or it will also tell the content of the registers so it helps to map those data into the human uh, readable format to enable this utility we have these configurations so while uh, building the kernel we can specify these configs and accordingly it will uh, initiate this uh, utility in the kernel uh, we will go into it further in coming slides so this is an example of a oop so here you can see that these are the different registers so we are printing the value of the registers and this is a call trace that means and these are the sequence of the functions that were running at that time when oop happened so let's now uh, briefly understand what is a kernel panic so kernel panic is a mechanism uh, by which kernel try to recover uh, because it is having some situation where it can't execute uh, it can't continue executing further as we have already uh, i have already talked about it so like it can't continue to execute or uh, there is a high risk of data loss so the panic situation it handles with the fun uh, with this function panic uh, and this is the same thing that i have already told you so it will try to uh, give some message on the console and it will dump the content of the uh, of the registers and the function calls and it will try to reboot the system automatically so let's now understand this utility that i already mentioned okay all sims so this is a standard content of uh, about the k all sims so sims is stands for symbols k means kernel and all so you can say kernel kernels all uh, symbols so it it is saying extract all kernel symbols for debugging so this is a command you can run uh, calls k all sims and this is some options and uh, whatever file you want on whichever file you want to run so let's now go line by line to understand it clearly so if you see here it is saying k, k, uh, k all sims extracts all the non stack symbols so these symbol uh, symbols are the name of functions or variables so we call it call them as a symbols from the kernel and builds a data blob that can be linked into that kernel for use by debuggers so while we are building the kernel at that time if this uh, we have enabled this k all sims with the help of configuration at that time it will build it will map the symbols or function names or variables with the memory and it will attach to the kernel image so if you read it here so it is saying that it will try to map all the symbols with their memory and it will generate a relocatable object and it will append to the kernel it that so when after that if any uh, uh, if we want to debug the kernel with the help of any debugger at that time uh, this will be helpful so let's now discuss further options of kernel debugging so as we have already discussed that many features we can enable with the help of uh, config of uh, configs so these are different configs so like if these kind of debugging we want to do like slab layer debugging high memory debugging io mapping debugging and spin log debugging so these things we can uh, enable with the help of uh, these configs so this is the same thing that uh, we have already discussed this is to debug the kernel and this is for spin log debugging in that way we can specify uh, or we can enable the configs for different type of debugging accordingly we can print more details of the kernel file execution so if you want to assert something uh, according to you and dump the content then we have this function uh, bug and bug on so these are the architecture independent functions and 
these are defined in a such a way that these are invalid uh, instructions and these causes oops so if somewhere we want to explicitly want to print the content of the registers and and the call stack at that time we can uh, implement these functions within our kernel to get the content at that particular point uh, or in the code so this is the same thing that and and after that as this is a illegal instruction so it will try to uh, kill that process at that time so this is kind of just a sample execution of these functions so we have some condition at that time we can run bug and bug on if you want to specify some specific condition uh, this is just the same thing but different implementation so let's now this is a separate function dump stack so if we don't want to print the register values then just want to print the uh, sequence of the functions or call stack at that time we will run this function so the difference between panic and dump stack is that uh, dump stack only prints the sequence of the functions but panic will print the register value uh, sequence of the functions and it will stop the execution of the kernel but this dump stack will not stop the execution of the kernel so this is the main difference so now let's uh, understand another way of debugging the kernel so this is we call it as magic sys rq key so system this sys rq means system request so we can say that system request so we have a specific key combination for this sys rq key uh, this is generally alt print screen and we can enable this uh, uh, this sys rq key feature with the help of this config uh, while building the kernel after that if you want to enable at the run time we have to run this command uh, and it will enable the feature after that uh, including this uh, key and some other key like sys ir uh, sys rq means alt print screen and after that you can run like you can uh, press h e b and other keys so what it does uh, it is already mentioned here so it will try to communicate with the kernel and kernel will try to respond to you based on these key combinations so if like uh, if you want to dump the register to the console you run sys rq p it will uh, dump the registers to the uh, console or if you want to shut down the machine then you can do this or if you want to reboot the machine then this is a command and in this manner we have a whole list of sys rq key combinations and if you want to see what are different kind of uh, uh, what key combination that you can run this you can run sys rq h it will display all the features that it can do so let's now move to the kernel debuggers so we have a gdb and kgdb so if you want to run kgdb on the kernel then this is a command so this is a uncompressed uh, file of linux and so we are trying to run the gdb on the core of the kernel so this will start the gdb and these are if you are familiar with the gdb then you know these commands so b is to just uh, create the breakpoints c is to just continue till continue the execution of the program till the next breakpoint uh, p to print some value of a variable and n is just to tell that go to the new line of uh, particular code and q is to quit the gdb execution and other things like we have there are multiple options you can go on in detail if you want to in this uh, video i am trying to go uh, like very over just the just the overview not very deep so kgd we have uh, a specific feature so if uh, like this is my buggy kernel and this is my working uh, uh, desktop so if i want to uh, debug the remote remote system where our buggy kernel is running at that time uh, on the serial line we can uh, 
make a connection with the kernel which is running with kgdb and in this different uh, system we can debug the this kernel with the help of the serial line and all these gdb uh, gdb commands we can run here and but actually we we are uh, we are debugging this system from this system so let's now discuss the other way so this is a binary search so binary search is also applicable for debugging the kernel so uh, how it is helpful so like if you know where we have uh, where the problem was not occurring that we will call it as a good kernel and and we know that in which version of the kernel we have a problem that is a bad kernel and currently which kernel we are using so in this way we can try to go in a binary search manner and check if this kernel is working fine for my problem or not in this way we can pinpoint the actual problem actual version of the kernel where our problem is happening so the same concept of uh, binary search so this thing is implemented by git we can do that in the git so let's now discuss that so we have a command bit by uh, git bisect so and this is a way we can start a git bisect uh, we have to run git bisect start then we have to provide the bad kernel if you don't provide any version it will take the whatever kernel we are working on as the bad kernel and again after that we have to mention which one is the good kernel so that it knows the range where it has to search and then when we run these three commands it will give us the version of the kernel and we on that particular version we will try to run our code and check if our problem is happening or not based on that we will say good vice uh, git bisect to good if our if the kernel version provided by git is working fine at that time we will say git bisect good if it is not working then we say that git bisect bad again after running this command uh, the git will give a new kernel version we have to test our problem on that version and in this way it will try to bisect our binary search and give a new kernel version where we have to run our uh, uh, check our problem if it is not happening at that time we can say that this is the actual kernel where our problem is not happening uh, not occurring so in this way we can pinpoint the actual version so like there is version one so here problem is not happening so this is a good kernel good kernel version and this is a kernel version 2 this is a bad that means we know that uh, this is uh, here our here problem is there and here is no no problem so in this manner we now we can check what are different changes here and we can search which uh, which pro, uh, which change introduce the problem and we can easily debug here so this helps to easily debug the kernel and this is the last way so if you don't know and you have spent a lot of time that even in that uh, in the in that time you are not able to figure out what is the problem then it is a uh, uh, it is the uh, like you can uh, communicate to the linux community because we have a lot of maintainers who maintain different uh, uh, subsystems of the kernel and multiple people are contributing so they are familiar with these problems and we can mail our problem to the community and they will come up uh, with suggestions or if someone exactly know the solution they will also uh, pinpoint you that and it will be helpful so this uh, this was the last uh, way to uh, to debug the kernel and, and these are the references for this video so this is all for this video i will see you in the next video